Here we are. Hello, good evening and welcome to the 21st Architect Speaks organized by Sona. I'm Yatra Sharma, your moderator for the evening. Today with us, we have a very distinguished guest from India with us. He is none other than architect Krishna Rao Jaisim. He's one of the leading architects of India and his career expands to a duration of almost 50 decades, a whooping five decades, a whooping 50 <laughs> years. <laughs> yes, uh, he started working during the 70s and uh, at that time, he was very inspired by the book Fountainhead by Ayn Rand. And that's why he named his organization Jaisim Fountainhead. That's so interesting to us. And uh, in the early 70s, when he started his career, um, he right away uh, got the national award uh, for the Cochin Stadium. And he, he got a president's nomination for the Taz Fisherman's Co. And there was no looking after back after that. Uh, and then he ventured in the international He went in for five years. He also explored the dimensions of um, architecture. He explored uh, building material supply and uh, running a stone crusher business, also running scheduled uh, contracts. And, uh, and then after five years in Muscat, in the 80s, he again came back to India in his hometown, Bangalore. And since then, he's been working from Bangalore, uh, four decades in Bangalore since then. Uh, his organization, his um, Jaishim Fountainhead, uh, it's done many, many variety of projects, uh, commercial buildings, uh, industrial buildings, educational um, uh, stadiums, amusement parks, and their resorts, apartments, luxury housing, race courses, uh, and a lot of interior works, uh, and many, many uh, in his list, I and mean, you can name it, he's done it all in his life. And he's also a very good author. We were just talking with him before this, um, we went live and he already had a very nice story to tell. Uh, he has authored many, many papers and presented uh, over hundred papers in international, national and state medias. Uh, he's achieved lots of awards, needless to say with his uh, area of work, uh, affiliations, uh, national, international, uh, many of those. He's uh, given over 1,500 presentations uh, uh, in architectural issues. And we are so delighted to have him here giving, him, giving us one of his uh, presentations today. Uh, the topic of the presentation is shaping the built environment and also the unbuilt realms. So we're going to have a very nice uh, story to hear from Sir about the works he's done for all this many years. Um, so I'd like to request all the audience who's been listening to this to keep all the questions aside and uh, write to us uh, towards the end of the uh, presentation in the question answer box, uh, not in the chat box, in the question answer box. Uh, I hope you have lots of uh, things to learn from this presentation. And you have lots of questions and answers to uh, ask him. So now I'd like to uh, request Anju Ma'am to give a short uh, welcome speech. She's the president of SONA. Uh, Anju Ma'am, uh, I'd like to request for a short welcome speech to sir. Okay. Hello. Namaste everyone. I would like to welcome everybody and especially uh, Joysim sir, whom I had the chance to meet on in my visits to India. We have very good memories together. And thank you so much, sir, for agreeing to this webinar, you know, in one shot. We are really very thankful and we look forward to learning a lot from you. My fraternity looks forward to learning a lot from your experiences, from your projects, that array of projects which I have really enjoyed going through. And we hope to have a very uh, successful session today with lots of questions coming in from our young architects. And I'm sure very entertaining answers coming from your side. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Over to you, sir, now. 
Namaskars to all at Sona, to all of you who introduced me, invited me to all the real problems in this COVID situation to say, let's have a one-to-one -one virtual talk and get inspired both ways. I stay in my cottage. When, when do you want to start? You tell me so that I'll be along with the story. But before you start that, I want to tell the audience that these slides that have been put together are part of my works uh, over the year, over 50 plus years of work, which have been put together. So they have put timing for each of them and running it along so that I don't get stuck with any project. And then you spent one hour spent only on one project. They said, each architect of mine said, no, sir, mine also should be seen, I should be seen. In spite of it, many of them there, it'll be running behind me. My talk may overlap or oversheet many ways, this way, that way. But as an architect, I believe you should be able to somehow contextualize the content which may be there, may not be there as a process. There are almost 600 slides, I understand. Then after, I'll be very open to question and answers anytime. Do not hesitate to ask me. Now I'll start off with the process. Go ahead. The first house, which I built for myself because I didn't have any client, you can start out with, is called Ego, which was influenced by Mies van der Rohe and built on the sea side in Madras when nobody would build. Then I jump off many times to my other office now in my thing. Uh, these are the early projects that are there. You go ahead. This is my first. This was on the seaside. I built for myself. I had no clients. Every block in that was made by my hands and my watchman's hand, everyone together. Then I, when they saw that very top people started coming together and said, can you build me one? Can you build? Then this big fisherman's coach was abandoned for the tide by somebody else. I took it over, it became an international thing. This was the view, this is the Ketterhedra, which our great Superman, Buckminster Fuller, who met me, I met him by accident and taught me how to do the bubble. And that won another international award, which was really surprising. Then I met some very good printers. We, we did very large span structures that went around. Then we started exploring into areas influenced by Koinsberger and Jeffrey Bauer into other areas of development. Something else happened in those days, I wouldn't archive all my works because I said architecture is a process, it's a continuum. And this is a house which I built again in, in Bangalore after I came back in 1980, it's very simple. It simply has a few windows and things, that's about it. And many people like the scientific advisor came up to me and said, could you do me a project? When I look at all the way we have been looking at things, eliminating windows, pushing back jollies, getting back the moon to make air breathe, makes a big difference to life. It's double skin like the human skin and the third skin inside of the flesh. I look at architecture as an overall thing, not necessary to be taken over from the past or the future or by technology. This is my present office here, which was built all by waste materials that were thrown away by everybody because they just said, we don't know what to do with it. I said, give it to me. And then even I went underground for my office, which goes inside what was called the sit back. Below the road, the setback is anybody. So below the road, I had space that became my lounge space for meeting visitors. Upstairs are water channels. This is where I used to work from till COVID came. All everything happening. It was just an open office. People would discuss in the verandas and things. Did too much traffic started. That's why sometimes they moved into my court here at the moment. This is the lounge upstairs there, working together and working things. It takes you up to the other floor where my wife works from her room in the positions in the thick. I, I really wanted to take to this because I found not, it was not necessary to build more than seven feet high roofs at those points. So what space, so what conditions. Then came a great film artist and a theater artist, C.R. Simmer, where he had a challenge with Charlie Chaplin. He was depicting Charlie Chaplin. So I put him together. I put underground, which every architect said, no, it cannot be done, cannot be done. And I have this philosophy in my office. If somebody says cannot be done, do it, because that can be done. But one thing I tell my clients, which obviously nothing can be completed. Architecture is a continuum. It always happens. Again, in this particular project, again, 
there were beautiful coconut trees, they were dying. So the client said, you can do whatever you want with the coconut trees, build me a home. I said, why should I cut the coconut trees a dancer? So when I built the whole house around it with dancing column, would you believe it or not that the tree started yielding 20 times, 30 times the coconuts, which means they also have life. They want you to be part of it. We have this process. Then came one of the great, Casarelli, one of the great directors of films. He said, put all my things into one house for me. And when I finished his house, he never even went out to take his movies. He would sit inside and direct all this. Although he had a beautiful house out in the village, we did it, we put the courtyard, we put the small, in a very small site compared to his ability. I believe in this, life is very creative. We must make, understand the difference and understand the differences. When I saw elephants coming and built a small outhouse, that's what you call yard house for somebody, we made it into triangles so that even if the elephant hits, the building will not break, it'll be strengthened. The elephants love to come and hit. So we made a lake of water so they'd come and drink the water from here, go up, rub themselves on the thing and go. They never interfered with life. One thing we had to build the structure, the context here was the elephant of rubbing shoulders with the structure. The tetrahedra, which I had learned earlier in school, 40 years back, helped me do this process much later. This is outside Bangalore. It still exists as an outhouse and goes very well for many people. It's a fascinating space where you collect all the rainwater and put it in one space. As this journey goes on, uh, there is a very interesting process that happens. Is the next one coming on? Yes, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, the next process goes on. He came and said, why don't you build me a city house for me? When I went, went to his own city house, it was a huge land with just a lot of what I would call uh, nothing nearby. It was all one old lake abandoned and put together, sand this. We literally floated the whole project. And in that project, we got what we called as the floating foundation we put. Then we dug another little pond next to it and made the water go to that place. So we collected water. And this is the same thing you're going back. This is where you sit and watch the elephants as they come and the beautifully he launched. And then the deers come and then some are luckily leopards and all hope you're going back to the first slide. And it is a real story when I keep going Architecture is a story, is what I always believe. It is a story you can write, you can sing, you can sing music with it, you can dance with it, you can literally play with it. This is the triangulation system that helps it hold. And after I finished, everything started growing around this place. Then this is why we took away the edge tiles so that the air would come and put fiberglass. I love to fuse modern technology with traditional technology or traditional understanding of materials. I believe there is no such thing as traditional architecture, modern architecture, future. Take this building for one, Mr. Suresh. He is from Australia and India and he came, a wife of the dancer. I said, I'm going to try one thing which I was taught. Only two elements allowed, clay blocks, and stone. 99% of the building is clay blocks, which people said will never work. The just jollies became houses and dancing halls. The only other element comes the glass to allow the permission of light in southeast and northwest, and then the walkway to the dancing hall sort of thing. And when the dancer dances inside, she can see what's happening outside, but you can't see her dancing inside. She enjoys the space. She says, This way of working in space on the right side, this one, the thatching is a very good acoustic material and it really infuses. Then when we turn the block around, something else happened. The air started floating out, which means the hot air. This house doesn't have any air conditioning at all because it automatically, and when I put a stone and said, this is a beautiful stone, he said, that is what I want for meditation. So that becomes a meditation space. We have literally not used any handrails and other things in this but grammars are the same. You must understand the grammar of architecture. Otherwise it's just A, B, C, D, E. Then I went into a little more organic shapes, understanding it's the most difficult thing to understand is that people just get circles. No, it is the most difficult is to form this organic and using new materials like feldspar for roofing and unburned brick for inside and learning from the lotus and other plants how to support the roof. This was almost 25, 30 years back. 
and using mud putt heads for the windows to mesh and let me water in, I found became, it started dancing with me, started playing with me to a point it is iconic by itself. To another client who came after that in a different, he says, when I was saying, why are you not covered the walkway? He said, they hardly range. It's nice to know where to walk. Poles tell you, but why should like a century around? Even this big dining hall in the middle, I don't have a roof except a netting to prevent crows and mosquitoes coming in. Otherwise, the big hall in the middle is open. The bedrooms are all have privacy. The sitting room has a little privacy. The kitchen has a little sense of space. The rest of it is just open. If you have noticed, I mean, this is the major central space, the cold space. And when I took all the water from the higher level to the lower levels, we took them to another pond, which I hope they show it here, I'm trying to go. I found greenery grew by itself. It grows beautifully and maintained. To a point now, what has happened is a lot of other people visited this house and said, why are you wasting? They told the client, we will take film shootings and other plays and other things. It has become an entertainment center for many people uh, to use it for various activities other than for living. This is one thing I keep telling architects. What you call as function is not really function. What you call as form is not really form. Architecture is beyond form and beyond function. It's something else. It's, it is what is timeless. There is no such thing as borrowing from the past, pushing it to the present. What I thought was a material thousand years back, today becomes current. And what I start looking at now goes to the future. And maybe I don't know, I'm hunting for materials in the future to use now. If the material behaved like this, what would I do? It really challenges you. It really takes you on as a big challenge. I, uh, this is the main center space. You can shift the uh, thing because I'm sure I want to know what's the next slide they're going to show. I will have pauses of silence at some time because the slides, I, might, I myself were walking back into some of the spaces after years and years of running around with them. Uh, the other aspect that I would continue to share with many architects is a sense of exploration. Architecture is not just experiment. Experiment, this is the puja hall in the center. When everybody meditates and says, Jesus, what is a puja hall? I said, place a space where you want, you like this rising sun or the thing. It makes a sense. You like rising sun, find a setting sun, or you like brick and mortar to pray for. You dip in, this the data. I, you can use it as concrete and steel, what the structures, to what I have, the basic mud wall to this. This simple structure was done for one of the greatest aviation uh, consultants. When I used simple mud pots and said, he looked at it initially with a little pessimistic. Then when I finished it, he said, it's beautiful, like an octopus sitting and it's acoustically unbelievable, which means you don't know what material is. You have to talk with the material, you have to interplay with the material to understand what the material is really. Like again, this another fantastic woman who just had space, I want to hide out or a quiet place to stay. The only thing she right hired the wrong architect. I made a very beautiful thing. The children wanted a swimming pool, I made a paddle pool inside. After we finished the coconut trees again, became big and nice and shady, and it became a great space for visitors to come. Uh, sometimes I wonder what architect, we thought it won't come, even if you notice the material structure, it was all lying around and putting it together and making the, teaching the workers or the people out there how to build differently, right? From the mason to the carpenter. You don't have to do what was in the past. You have to understand the past and come forward like this big stones here. We built this whole house for this other gentleman under the ground uh, for all these places using the old system of vaults. But these vaults are hollow inside for taking sound and air and power and other utilities because architecture is not just design. It's working with some 19 to 30 different utilities or disciplines which come together and fuse. When you find a well, I want to jump the well. They said, you break the well. I said, the well was there much before you. So I jumped the well and redid the staircase to put it together. These are very good people who after some, you see in the beginning, the client doesn't understand either who is this mad fellow. But afterwards, when you finish it, it's a journey. Then they start understanding that there is something that really matters. That there is something, when I don't touch the wall there, it is a grammar. It is makes a lot of sense, intention, 
It is like putting a comma or something like this or the great man who had the cottage there. All the people were throwing away the field stones on the road, making a new road. We took all the things and when I fixed the glass and the railway line sleepers, which were replaced by concrete sleepers, they became superb acoustic and insulation roof systems on the roof and the flooring became part. We simply did the thing and the prior hall was simply a door. I said, only the door. What about the rest of the world? I said, no walls. Want to walk into the door? You, the wall is imaginary in your head, up to your respect. And when we turned the roof, we found it became five to six times stronger. Structure teaches you sometimes not through the structural engineer, but the structure as material by itself teaches you. And when we put these wooden things onto the steel column, we found instead of resonance, there was a question of absorbing of sound that happened. Columns and stones teach you many times. Something else happens. Something you start looking at the material, you start looking at the structure, you start looking at the space, and then a dialogue happens. In that dialogue, something opens up. Like this man wanted a pure Vastu house. I don't know why, he smiled it and said, this is the sketch, this is what you're going to get. He said, Vastu talks about squares. I said, where does it talk about? Where does it say? It only talks about the meaning of the sun, the moon, the moon, the rise. He listened and listened and listened. And then finally agreed, he said, okay, do it. If I don't like it, I said, you don't like it straight away. What you want, it's up to you. But then believe it or not, this was, house is visited by any number. Structural engineers could, is it defines. If you notice the bricks are all vertical in this, which was again violently violating the principles of brick structures of what you're taught in school. And each hole here is made with the sun and the moon calculated in a very specific way by whom, by my maestri and the other thing with a little compass around. And he can literally tell me the calendar of the month and the day by looking at his floor, which the, the sun and the moon dance with this, dances with them. The air moves around her, which really illuminates a sense of architecture that opens up. And we hardly use any plaster or anything. What I put higher level is, instead of using cement mortar, we climbed it with some other materials which is modern available. And I found the ability of the brick increases unbelievably. So which means modern technology, fused with traditional work or what is historical work, changes the way one people like. People always question me, do people stand and cook at two feet, six inches or sit on the ground? I said, that's your problem. You tell me how you wanna cook, you do. Like when you walk up the ramp, you want to come down fast? Okay, you have a space to come down fast. This is where the sun plays, and we have the sun diagram here, a month and delay going around. Even this is below the lake, which is adjoining it. So the lake water would come in. So we had a little spout of water which would come in and come out the other way. It is really a very fascinating thing. We didn't build windows at all in many of the rooms. We just put jolly around it four or five feet away so that there's a sense of privacy. For the this is the space in between mm -hmm. the room and the house and the land. And I find it works very well. It is a very fact visited by a lot of people, things. He's now literally made it a yoga center also. <laughs> it calls a lot of people. And next to it, believe it or not, I think they may have some slides of the yoga center also next to it here. But that is very modern and, and it's and I use the word more technologically, another fervor of work. Here is the same thing. You just walk up, up, up. There's no staircase, you just move up the ramp and then come down in that spiral staircase down. This is the main hall, nearly 40 feet of Spain. This is very true, the heritage and tradition. This is the yoga center. I also, he also told me yoga also needs water, which meditation and yoga center. And he says, I need quiet places and I need open spaces. I said, that's up to you. Tell me what you want. Space, space, space. I'll work it out. Light, light, light. At your sound, sound, sound. Where to what you set it out. You put a thick frames. And then the water flowing literally sings to you most of the time and tells you where you're moving around. Not. This is another space that works. This is for the person with emphasis. When he suddenly said, add another floor. I said, your structure won't take it. And I looked at the structure. We bound steel pipes around it and it took another two floors on top, which made the library and numbers easy, which means even the buildings talk again and say, strengthen me, make me physically more stronger, then I'll give you more space to, for you to play with. Which means 
what is originally designed is not necessarily what holds you back. Another thing which we did is between the setback and the house, what was the legal setback? We never built walls in most of the places. We left them alone. He said, I asked the corporation, I asked the corporate person, I said, what happens if I leave the space in between? He says, what about the window? I said, my window is without frames. He just smiled and he said, okay, as long as you have a garden on the five feet or 10 feet, which we had asking. I was quite happy to do it. And it made a lot of sense. Like you sit on the terrace and have a tea in these good old patterns. Go ahead. Sometimes when it continues, I <laughs> sometimes really, when you come back to, go back to the quiet wine again, that's nice. Sometimes I'm glad you go back and come back. It looks nice, even I'm getting very fascinated by some of these spaces. The other talk which I want always architects to explore is there is a difference between copying and imitation. Copying is understanding and bringing it down to your presence. Imitation is simply taking from somewhere and putting, that should go. If that goes, things happen. Unfortunately, many, many architects all over the world and think it's very easy to convince a client. Even today, I was told that war zone material is simply an imitation thing which they have approved, which many senior architects called me and said, what is happening? I said, how can we intervene with this thing? because it's easy for the politician or the bureaucrat to look at something imitated, oh, it is like the Taj Mahal, or it's like the Hampi temple, or prove it. He does not understand. So that's where, yeah, yeah, you're crossed. You've gone to Chadanam's house now. Can go back a bit. Yeah, this is Chidanam Rajgata's house. He's in the US, where when I was finishing, he would say, in fact, you can go up, oh, no, no, this is, my office. Go back to the present middle level. Go down, 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 down. Uh, down, this, down. Is, this is very early. Down, yeah. down, down, down. Yes, yes. More, sir? I, I can't see the thing. Put one and show me, then I will know. Oh, you come, you go up again. This is ITC. Go up, go up, go up. Go up a little more, little more, little more. Put one now and show me what it is. Go, no, go up, show me a picture, then I will know. Any picture? Go a little more up there. Little more up. This is Abdul Kalam's favorite house. Go up a bit. A little more, a little more. Yeah, a little up, and this is enough. They've come to this okay. part of it. You've seen that doesn't matter if you don't see it. Now we can slowly go Again, around. it's gone there. <laughs> it likes to see my <laughs> office. I can take a hack. Yeah. I don't know how. That's why I said technology, whatever I do, technology defies you. <laughs> oh, present. Uh, and you must be wondering what we all are. Yeah, I'm getting Oh, confused. you're going to Chikmangalur now. Somewhere you're going. This one? No, this is much later. Go up. Go up, this is the IAPM. Go up a bit, go up a little more. This is a beautiful project. I would like to talk about yeah. it. Go up a bit, little more. Yeah, little, little more. Yes, you're almost there. Ah, oh, that is a little more. That is a two now. Yeah, it's the 200 slide. Uh, how many? I think we should remember the site. Go up a little more. <laughs> You're almost there. A little more, a little more. Slide number 200. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. gosh. What fun. Oh, bus. I think this is enough. Enough, enough, yeah. enough. Yeah. It's enough. That's we go down from here. Yeah. This is the yeah. okay. yeah. The education center person. Yeah. Now, from here, it goes slowly. Allow it to go. I'll be able to do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. Oh, you can go down. Okay, it's the main space of work. You go down. All right. This is that again. Back into that yoga center thing. You can go virtual space is real. The real space is virtual. It's a question of how they interpret. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't oh, no. perfect. Learn. I don't mind walking through some of my projects again and again. You can go. Is it going automatically, or are you pressing? 
It's automatic, sir. Then why is it stopped in this? We have finished this fella. This is what happens with automatic. <laughs> Virtual reality happens and we need manual interference. Yeah, it's stuck, I think, again. Mm -hmm. It's not moving. You're the technology person. <laughs> I'm just yeah. my pen and put it <laughs> Anyway, some people who are watching will really understand what is happening in this. Very interesting. Uh, where are we now? This is somewhere else. Doesn't matter. You can go. To, yeah, you can go down. You can go down. Back, it's back. Uh, it's stuck. Look at office course. Stuck with that house, not with the bigger project. So that doesn't matter. Yeah. Skip Fifty projects doesn't matter. In the meantime, if somebody has a question or something to ask, they're perfectly open to ask, so that I can interact with that also. Or if you want me to get into my philosophy, when people who taught me how to think a very strange okay. kids, one of the first was Sheila Tribe. Then Buckminster Fuller, then Otto Coinsberger. Then I okay, had it's moving now. Yeah, good. Yeah, you come to this big fine span house. The same house, you go down perfectly on it. It'll move by itself. How will it move? Not it moving move. again. <laughs> Any, you go to manual and move finished <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah, I think I should do that. Yes, do it, ma'am. I'm quite happy with it. Just go. Do it. It must have also said, ah, let's freeze and tell him what it oh, means. Hmm? You like to go back to your yoga center. That's the problem with you. are going yeah. back to the yoga center. <laughs> yeah, it's moving now, sir. Yes. Well, let's see. This is the terrace of the task where we added a lot of load to make a library. And books are very heavy. People don't realize it. So loading books and putting it together became a big challenge and then putting living rooms where people like to sit and visit. This staircase here is very interesting. I hope it comes because it also has a lift in, integrated with it to take people up and down. It's a very process that people ask people see the problem or what I would say biggest challenge stopping again stop. One of the challenges of architecture is when the client comes he comes with his family or his kids or his father or mother or whatever it is they come. Or sometimes one client just get married and come. They, they have to realize it takes about one year or two years to finish that home. And by the time if their lifestyle is also changed, their methods of approaching life is also changed. That's why like most impatient clients nowadays don't like this happening. So they go and buy an apartment or a flat. This is the terrace which is not the real way a home is. A home is something else. That is just a place to live. This is a staircase that comes down beautifully at this house, but it certainly goes nowhere. It's a very interesting, powerful staircase. Then there's a little bridge that connects the thing and takes them into the library so that nobody else can easily get inside. You got a courtyard garden that goes around. Look at the books you've got, a couple of tons of them all over the place that runs fully. This is very true. Architecture is not all. In fact, we were talking and saying, is, it, is architecture an environment process? Or what is it? Like this house, then we did. We didn't put handles in the beginning. The key has little cares. He says, what do I do? But the kids will learn. In fact, the kids learned it faster than the older people when they started moving up and down. Then when we put an older mother, he said, no, please, sir, just put on railing. Anyway, we made a playing railing, a dancing staircase to go up. This is another thing which I do very often. In fact, this is called the floating connection between the bedrooms and the lounge, because we didn't want any columns hanging. In my entire practice of over nearly 50 years and doing about 2000 presentations class, this is Chidanand Rajagata, so the New York Times, she stays in New York, comes and works here. He said, when I was doing it, removing the shuttering, we looked at the shuttering. In India, we remove shuttering sometimes very badly. But if you give it a color and texture, it looks like artwork. He said, it's different, it looks very powerful. So all his US friends would say, how can you ever do it? I said, you can never repeat it because this is only once in lifetime design. 
So I don't know whether they're building me or they have enough. Look at the texture on the roof on the left side. If I started killing it and plastering it, it will not have the torque. So every, it's a question. This is why I said you can't draw all the drawings in the beginning and say, this is how my building will finish. This is my architectural finish. It is a story. It's a play, it's a dialogue that continuously happens. And if you have the time and energy and move. And the one thing is you don't build, this is another house in Karmatha for a very big industrialist, one of the top industrialists in India, where he said, I want it very geometrical, simple, clean, easy to maintain, things like that. We managed to convince him of how water can be taken in, pushed out, walked about. He started smiling and looked at me and said, yes, I understand. This is for the other person, which is, he's today with the other, he was Tata's person in the beginning. Then I found roofs and ceilings also play. They are unbelievable creatures. This is not the southwest of this great man's house. Really, <clears throat> and that's to sit down and what he calls meditate. This is another thing which we started shifting materials into their positions again, which gave us very different type of expressions. <clears throat> the handrail especially, I started playing. I find children loved it. Why should the handrail be three feet, three inches or two feet, nine continuous? It can change. It can move. Don't we also move? Then I found the handrails moved. Steps went wide and thin. It was done for a great scientist and the thing, very great person. Very simple, small side. When I wanted a little more space upstairs, he said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to shift the wall. How will it stand? I said, the steps stood on the wall. Now the wall is going to step on the steps. He smiled at me and said, you architects are mad. I said, yes, sir. But then after I finished, he gave me a hug. He's a great man. Still, the moment I walked that side, he pushes me in and said, you must sit and be with me for some time, like steps and staircases. Sometimes, except for the rise and tread, the other pieces of staircase can violently change. Because I believe music happens there. Visually, if everything was identical, it makes no sense. But if something happens, like you see a dog running around or a cat running or the children running around or something, if your spaces also run around you or the steps and meet small things like this bird not speaking behind me all the time, or the squirrel is also behind it, not speaking and wondering. This was built in the north, a very great agriculturist person, where he, I said, when he saw the <laughs> tubes, he said, what are you doing? He said, I'm going to build a house in tubes. I've never heard of anything like this. After this, you would hire me for anything you wanted to do. It's a huge house. I could choose any land, anything, and build it. It's a very fascinating thing that people are willing to discuss with you, provided we architects sit with them, have a dialogue. Yes, we need patience. They need patience. You have to find a time. And when you start doing, they come up with bigger challenges than we expect. And that is where the challenge happens. We can get away with drawing, this is my drawing, this is the way you build. Oh, this is another great scientist, one of the greatest scientists, Byron's house. He built it like, this is Abdul Kalam's favorite staircase. I, I had a picture of him walking out and said, I'm dancing on this. I really love that man, <laughs> really crazy. <laughs> and then we went, took him down. He said, water is coming. I said, yes, sir, somebody built taller buildings around. It may become a swimming pool. Luckily for me to stop, or I'd like it could have been a swimming pool. It's become a lovely place for gatherings and readings and meetings. Till he died, he would always visit this place. It belonged to the Indian Institute of Science director at the time. Future, let us look after ourselves. This is one thing I tell all the senior architects. Oh, we are building for the future. We're, I said, no, learn to build for yourself now. These are all for the senior IAS officers, public officers, who will come with some public project for me to discuss. Then walking around with me, they said, forget those projects, build me a home or design me a home. When it comes to their personal homes, bureaucrats are unbelievably free with you. But when it comes to public domain, they freeze your hands, legs, tie everything up because the PWD ties them up. They question, question, question. They would rather go with what was written before and simply sign. That is the problem. We have to change that. But to live, survival is very easy to live. I like this great man, it's fascinating. We never built a wall around him at all. Sit back, went. This is the Hewlett Packards. At that moment, he was the MD, the chairman at that point. 
very quiet person. Jesu Brahman, very, very interesting. We go to the involving force. This is sometimes when I take the house a little higher and see what happens, take the stones, push them off. My young architect, look at the stake as it walks this way rather than go the other way. And still the steps are very comfortable. I get my youngsters now playing with me and say, can I play with the roof? Can I play with this? I said, yes, yeah, every roof and every stake, as I was telling you, we have not repeated a single stake as ever. We have not repeated a single anything. This is right on the hills. Belongs to the tourism director in those days. Now she loves it. If she sees it, she will say, ah, what are you showing? I said, madam, you have such a beautiful view. Why spoil? She said, it's all your rati. Ciao. So I just put it. She says, people just come and one thing, how to roof this at the place. We just use thin fiber, fiber, oh, no, not uh, fiberglass. There's another fiber roof that I got from Spain and just pushed it on top of her head. And just the beautiful space. And this is where her little space of interaction happens. She works on that hill, walks down to the skull and comes right. Decisions demand design. Very important even for a very tight project held back some time, we architects must learn to take decisions, depending upon where we are, why we are, and how are we going to get it implemented. You may make a drawing, you may make a 3 model, 3D model, but then the structure speaks to you and what do I need? How do I go about like this take is, I had a beautiful fabricator, he loved it, say, so can I come up with something else? He plays with you. I find every person, India is very fortunate that way that every person who works with you, probably same thing with Nepal, where every person who works with you has this intense within himself. And then if you allow him to express, he joins with you. This is the Institute of Photography, Light and Life Academy in Kunur, where I saw the laborers' quarters hanging in a short form. I found they're more beautiful than what the British ever built or anything, very built and very comfortable. And the slope was initially when we built the traditional we couldn't stand. Then I put this on a 45 degree slope where studios, all these things came up. Their projection screen exposed material just washed with local uh, syrup from one of the trees that took the washing for all the thing. And the students walk around here. To finally, when I walked around one fine day, I find the students even, they're not photographies. They wouldn't even go out of the campus. They said, sir, there is enough fascinating space here for us to work with because it's got infinite studio, finite studio, all sorts of spaces that work with. Simple structure, very simple building, but unbelievable. Look at them, each one competing to get a space for the thing. That's one of the biggest Kodak and Agfa have pro processed with this, and they joined with this for international programs. Most of the people are from all over the world. They come and study the movement, they come, there's a little walk towards the canteen, when the run, rain falls on it, it's beautiful. This is one of the biggest automobile studios where all cars are shot. We pushed the whole thing underground so that it is not seen straight away from anywhere unnecessarily. It's like a little fellow going below the ground. It's got a beautiful profile, very simple roofing material. And in the evening when the todas had left one campus space, that becomes the evening space to eat. That's the architecture. It is there already. Only thing you have to make that space work for you. It is not necessary that you have to build that space. It is even designed for you. It's only how we tell the plus, make use of it in a different sense. Something happens. This is very true. You can't hurry your architecture. You can't hurry like this more thing where the higher and the lower, the automatic breeze blows and cools the space. This I use for public building, the Institute of Plantation Management, where I had some top structural engineers post on me, but very nice man later on and built this, but I had to follow very strong regulations. But I found even there, when we start dialoguing with them and said, I can hang it instead of supporting, slowly they will also change and came up. I said, I don't need handrails, I need movement, I need light, I need air. Maybe they agreed because the, also one reason they agree is most of my basic costing falls down heavily. That may be also help. I get more spaces, I get more buildings coming up. And this plantation management, it's all, I said, you have anyway plantation, plant me all your plants and trees, which you have to anyway experiment and lab with. So if that became part of an integration process. They said, when are you putting the false ceiling? I said, no, that is your false ceiling. The sky is the higher ceiling, this is my false ceiling. That's where the light comes through, the garden works. You walk through and the rocks were there. I even shifted the place so that the rocks wouldn't be touched. The rocks look live, they almost look like 
some beings that look at you. This is the other Institute of Management, which is in Tumkur side, built by, for the one Swamiji, one of the Swamiji's who lived up to 120 years, a phenomenal person. Every other building in that campus was straight line, straight line, straight line. When we did this and when we used the open court and made it into an auditorium and we said, we will not have corridors connecting anybody, we will not touch one tree. He really looked at me and said, okay, go ahead. <laughs> and he really loved it. He allowed me to do it freely and the lady who supported me, the management person really got it through. It became very interesting, it's almost 15 years there, she passed away now. I use the light to filter through. They wouldn't accept in the beginning, but when it came, it's a beautiful light in shadow. So I said, why do you need a corridor? How many times do you, it has to be covered for you to walk up and down. The tree was there, beautiful tree. Now and then they have open lectures going in the middle. It's very interesting. Goal, this is again up to the ITC factories, which gave me a project of selecting something, but I don't know why they selected me, people caught in. They gave me, a said, you can demolish all the sheds and build us one. Technology center. They were first going to IT. I said, why should I build? That is the fellow who gave you the money to start your company. The MD was the only one who looked at me and that's Jason, you're the only architect asked that question. You, we're going to appoint me. I said, no. Then I took it up. They forced me to take it. Then I took it up. I really enjoyed it. I said, no question of interference. What do you think is they would have given me any budget they wanted. We finished the project, the whole project initially one, then another 19 projects and one tenth of the budget thing. I said, no need of stake, I mean, cushion, furniture, fabric, anything. No plaster, no false ceiling, nothing. He just smiled and smiled till the chairman came and the MD came and said, this is wonderful. I said, I'm not even going to close the room. What rock was available became the reception table. Smoking area was just gravel and the Buddha's thing became the expense of space and prayer inside. And this is how the movement goes. When I take away the window and put the jar, the air moves inside. Although it's air conditioned inside, these acoustic room, the top people came and when they put the air speakers, they said, we don't need speakers here. We don't need anything. It was really a big challenge. The canteen was very, made very colorful. The girls in the office would paint something and come. I said, go, stick it out. And there they would have all <laughs> beautifully stuck. And put. one thing we made it fireproof and other conditions of safety putting it up. The furniture, like the tree was there. The tree get priority. Like all trees cut, become another reception table. It becomes very, very interesting when you work with this. See the, all the furniture colors, they're all from various things. So the students identifies, or, I mean the worker identify the person, the IT person who identifies this table by the color and then just moves to this. They're spaced away, they've got light. And when they want to smoke, they walk into it, they work inside. They can't go outside the campus, so they have to be within a space, which is their security law that works very tight. In the old walkway, they simply pull the walkways away and put water bodies. That stopped people crossing, plus it gave water, which is a beautiful material, it's the beautiful sense which makes life come alive. Water is like air is one of the things. This is one coffee day thing where we told coffee day, wherever the floor, floor is missing, that's your thing. This is the library on top. Simple furniture designed, books only available at hand height, shoulder height and less, and put it together. Now let's go into another area of thing you may go around. Some schools in Chikmangalore, which are already built and existing, how to manage and make something out of them. So we got them working with us in near the hillside thing and said, it need not follow any patterns. Classrooms could be different. You know, there's no idea that every classroom should be identical. They slowly agreed, came through the process. And then they said, we need not have corridors direct. They can move this way, that way. In fact, I said, no classroom of yours should have a corridor outside because children should be walk, should not be walking there. They should be walking in the central space. Classrooms should have privacy in a sense. 90% of classes when we built have ventilators on the corridor side, which is very long. Shouldn't. This is where the same Sabaji after I finished gave me this as a big child minimum cost for orphans. He said, what will you do if the cost is one half or quarter? He said, no plaster, nothing simple, no bed, nothing rolls. Just use this block washed with the same students. And they're all orphans who all come from various places. He didn't expect, in fact, I call it one of the most beautiful buildings we have done for the simple people. It's unbelievable. 
We went and built the whole thing. This is to my other great friend, Rishi Sri Roshanka's Art of Living Spaces. He said, I want it. I said, every other architect all abroad wants two years to design. He said, I have three months, I must conduct my event. I finished it in two weeks. I said, Guruji, don't ask me any questions. I will do it. Just sketched it, learned it from Buckminster Fuller, built the thing, got the fabricator, put it together. It started as a 70 feet span, went to 150 feet span, right there, modify one and a half inch diameter pipes, and it's still there existing and beautifully used to all over the place, which shows, this is all the sketch I made, nothing else. The fabricator understood, he would, and they would just have fun. Then came the other end of another, at the same time almost, what will you do on a hillside? We can't take any property. So we dug the earth, built these mud houses, and all the decorations are made by the local women and cleaning. They did the work, they did the thing, they made the tiles also somewhere else and put it. And when we dug all the earth and said, what are you going to do with it? I said, that's be the swimming pool for you on the country. So we got the earth from there, we got the swimming pool. We didn't bring one material from outside. It was all there, which shows that you can do that also as a challenge, but not easy. When it comes to very disciplined places like a hospital, we said, why should hospitals have corridors in the center and people on this side, that's fine. Luckily from the chairman and the MD were very open we said, we'll try something else. And it worked, it just moves around spaces. I don't know, <laughs> they haven't shown any. Uh, this is the astrophysics building, which also followed very similar. Every hole here is designed with their assistance to show where they can see the sun on the earth and the stars and movement. So it becomes part of the process. The client must interact with you if he of a particular order, and it works well. We didn't cut a single tree, we didn't cut a thing. But he, you know where the sun rises or the moon rises, that sun, more, that particular star of comet rises, it goes away. Thought to that action does not matter. This is very, very, very crucial point when you start understanding some spaces. Oh, this is a lovely span. Sometimes I wonder what they will use. This is wildlife building, where stories happen. Where we, when I finished the work, I said, do we need a fencing? No, we came to see wildlife, let the animals come in and go, they'll also be part of it. So we don't even barricade the here, we don't barricade the leopards come, walk up the steps, jump and go away. The other ones come, small hyenas and others also walk in behind them. Only thing there is a guard around to ensure there is security and safety. If the elephants come rub against each wall and then it's it really fascinating when you work with the wild. They're not wild. In fact, sometimes I find we are more wild we change things. When somebody like the great man, they didn't tell me for whom this art gallery was supposed to be done. Then the person who passed away, then you will see it coming up, then you can recognize the artist. I given, I said, I'm going to make mobile uh, units, interiors, this is when the interiors came. Using spaces to work out so that they can big paintings, small paintings, changing spaces, then happen all the time. And lighting should come on the paint without interference. And you must be able to sell coffee and a drink to any top man. So they, you see the paintings, you'll recognize who the person is. You can give this as a question to the students to recognize this great artist who passed away some time back. It was a real challenge. But he really agreed, gave me a hug on, <laughs> and after that it will be used by other artists and painters at that time. Taking an old building and converting it into a, a canteen or a restaurant. I agreed with the old mother. I said, I won't touch with your building, madam. Don't worry about it. We just covered the whole building and started a restaurant. The restaurant is there just outside on the lawns. We dug a little ground with two levels growing. And the old building is on the left side. This modern high-tech building covers you. So the high-tech covers the history and it's beautiful. This is Suvita. This is where I live at the moment. If you see something wide, this is a lake we have created. This is level. Everybody can walk everywhere. And the roads are only eight feet wide so that you don't drive fast. You can use only a buggy. I don't call them roads, I call them walkways. They're just there car sheds park and you move in. Slowly, if somebody else comes, you go by the side and move the other person outside. This is the big clubhouse and other facilities, which are in the, as soon as you enter on the left side. These are all the cottages that go around here. 
The, here we had to follow identical patterns outside because you didn't know who was allotted what, it was pre-built. The inside alone can change, it becomes a share, nobody owns it, that becomes very important. This is my cottage, that is a little different here, so people say, oh, yours is, I said the area is the same, only one I modify the walls. Literally, I'm sitting in one of these areas now, which you're looking, literally sitting next to this Nataraja, standing behind Nataraja is on my right here. I even removed the column in the middle and said that it float around. You can see it on the same. This is below where I'm sitting, that people come, students usually come and meet me there. Imagination to innovation as you move forward to another world of working with a dentist. Doctors usually forget the dentist they have their patients looking at the ceiling. So we said ceiling is more important than the thing and staircase is more important than the benches and other thing. So we had lovely paintings on the and <laughs> ceilings and then these patients would look up and by the time he was looking up, his tooth would be pulled off and the doctor was very thrilled. He started charging 10 times more than before. He calls it an art dental surgery or whatever it is. It becomes a piece. It doesn't have to be like tied up space, a hospital or a clinic. Can we look after ourselves? This I keep on repeating, I keep saying. I give it to very interesting clients, very simple clients sometimes can tell them this budget, can you do? When I play with their staircases, play with their lines, I said, this is your home. You should have an identity, you should have space, something work. And look at the way it goes. People, it's a why they're not perfectly. So that's how human hands are, that's how human body is, that's how organic actor is. If you look at organic nature and organic article and human beings take, take the senses and make them into elements. It's very easy to look at some other way, but it is difficult as a child, especially when the plants grow in your building without even asking for it and something else happens to it. The tree starts speaking, the plants start speaking, and the bricks and things start speaking with each other. There is what you call a conscious discussion of something happens. So any person who walks into any of these homes for the first time and second time, there is enough to converse and talk. Something happens. Because it's not just trip four white walls or some kind of, no, no, there's something more that happens. So the place should, what I call spiritually, open the person to look at things with another very, a villager came to me and said, I want a home. I said, you people have all the land in your world. Why do you want me to do it? He said, do what you want, where you want. When well, we didn't know how to cost him. So I thought they would go for traditional hardcore thing. When I went for high tech open, I thought he might reject me. No, he started, which means we people have not given the villagers what we architects can really do. When we bought this roof and said, he really loved it. He said, sir, why isn't nobody gives us all this? Why should your door be straight? Why should your door not be anything else? Why? And he would give me materials and other things lying all over the village and say, do it, say it's yours to do. It was a big challenge. Now my challenges are usually in third level and fourth level urban spaces. That's the urbanization I'm talking about. I don't want to sit in the city and work, which is cancerous and getting, I would like to move down where these people understand you better. One thing, you must dialogue. Them. Initially, they'll say, can you build a house like so-and-so in the heart of the city? You must dialogue and say, that is not yours. Your space is very different. Your time is very different. Your life is very different. And slowly they come with you. And once they come with you, their enthusiasm is 10 times more than yours. And they come up with unbelievable solutions. They will make you sit on the top of the tree, the coconut tree and tie it up, bridge together and show. Many things happen. It is almost a discussion and a dialogue. And they come up with more. They have, well, the women in the villages are very artful, artistic. Yes, how do you freedom to choose? When the, when the same village says, we want a clubhouse. We said, okay, we'll be disciplined in the picnic and then we'll take you around to a clubhouse which is very different. And when I said, I'm going to do something different for you, he said, what? You, they said, we want a swimming pool. They thought I'll dig under the ground a swimming pool. When I said, I'm going to float to a swimming pool, just for the fun of it, I thought I'll get thrown out. They said, sir, do it. Believe it or not, we floated a swimming pool. And I said, what would you like below the swimming pool? He said, what do you mean, I have space. So we did the bar below this. We didn't even allow them to put railings around you. Only where safety with children was done. That's only the place. We allowed the water and the greenery to move all over the club inside. I think there's a huge number of slides with this. 
another very interesting client. I'm just jumping spaces. I'm just talking to you as I see the pictures and floating in front of me. We, patterns are created. My young architects create patterns. We come up with a story. Each one has a story. I said, any dome has a story to tell. It's up to you to create that universe. We were created to think. All the only animals behave within their matter of fact. And even when they work, they work with them, but they work very fascinatingly. We humans must think. You mustn't repeat. That's why I hate this urban flats and things coming up, which look identical all as if they put people in. So this is another great, very interesting client with a cultural person. He would love you anything. He said, what are you doing? I said, Martha, okay, that takes my piece of art. So he found we could find anything from anything. Big space. One of the his wife said, why do I need such a big space? He said, no, you wanted to sense the village in the city. Here is giving you the sense of village, <laughs> city. So look at the light that comes and it's just verticals, no large windows except one or two places, just runs in. Yes, it's a manifestation. Materials have avatars. How to make the avatar come through? You need a lot of help from a lot of people. Even when a column comes, can the column speak to the two walls and say something can happen? I find it's a process. It can do. When the blinds come, we work a small gallery around it. Something else happens. Sometimes I wonder where I did all these things. <laughs> where did I get the guts to do all these things? It looks so severe and simple. When somebody walks in, it becomes beautiful in another way. Art becomes architecture. Oh, this is the other one. Okay, let me see what all they take. This was an abandoned mine in Orissa site, where again Art of Living said, we wanted to build as a university. When we took this project and then we said, first we said build hostels with the university, we didn't even close the mines. We said, we're going to build every one of them in the mine itself. So whatever in the mine is where we built all their spaces, the mines. And we used modern technology to do this process of work, which are very thin walls, which means with using technology in the sense of art with these people, we could build more, create more space. We said nothing will come on the ground floor, nothing will come on the terrace. Terrace will be garden, ground floor will be just open for the air to move in and out. I don't have the sketches here. They became very fascinating on these points. It became a big challenge, but a very big space to a point. This is learning from the creatures. The ant hill taught me this. And this is another one that takes you onto this. this is the art of this, the old building on the left that exists. He said, I want you to build me a center. He said, what to do? I said, sir, I can't disturb the old building. What do I do? He said, up to you. So I put the whole project underground. This was the sketches, only sketches I showed. I hope there are some pictures to show you how we're going under. This is the top surface. We have water body on top, the walkway around. This is, this is the water body on top. People will think that's the end of the project. No. Now what happens is we covered the soil with strong concrete. We covered it. It's still into the process of, this is the below the water tank below the water body on top. This is where the entire forum meets. It can be divided into lecture halls, exhibition halls. And we had a sense of history, a sense of a thing, which became structural columns to hold the roof. It's got a lot of slides, it's a huge project by itself. Life is a monument. When you build a Ghana hospital for somebody or somewhere outside, some of these are older. Why build them again, identical, something else? It doesn't mean you have to have parallel lines. That's the one thing I said, no. We will make it organic, we will make it sensitive, we will make life work with, with the site, with the people, it matters a lot. This is what is called housing for the farm. The, I found the easiest and the simplest, most economical way of building pure housing was using the hexagon and the octagon. We took them together. This was for the housing problem that happened a couple of years back housing for the masses. And I find it is more fascinating, more beautiful than what we did for the reg. But the hexagon and the octagon really give me structure. And it gives me flexibility of tremendous nature. One day it's a two bedroom house. One year later, it can be a one bedroom house or a three bedroom house. No lifts, nothing. The air flows below, the air flows above. All the marketing is done below. And you could either have sectors or you could have things. This was the Tamil Nadu chief minister who looked at it, one called all the villages, made them look at models. Would you believe it or not, the villages 
And the fisherman immediately said, yes, we want it in Tamil. I was really surprised. And I hope one day they finish it. Here comes some scientific projects for very interesting people. When it comes to very top scientists, I sketch it in such a way that they don't understand what I'm doing sometimes. It makes a very different argument, but I found they could understand. The real good scientists understood, the research people. This is for a very confidential research lab, which is cleared. I don't know whether they started building or building, when they will tell us. The doctor said, I mean, when you say doctor, when Professor Nashlam said, we are doing it, but this is 90%, nobody will know where it is coming from. But they're already having that classes happening. It's a very fascinating project. This is imagination. Imagination becomes reality. This is the laughter university. A very fascinating person who came and said, I want you to design, I heard of you, come and design. I said, then the buildings must make people laugh. He said, yes, you must make them laugh. So this is creating space in such a way, everybody, nobody knows where to go, how to go, they keep wondering when they're having a laugh and walking around. We said, human beings, when they laugh, the muscles work so fascinating. Why can't the muscles of the building also work? So the whole process of the university is that. These are all pro projects that have been cleared, hope one day. This is the other one, again, in Orissa, <laughs> it got just one back to another, residential and the education part. That's the other sector, but under the mines again, where even the roof is used for either power generation, it should, it's a hundred percent self-sustained project where the power is gathered in totally. We don't want water, everything's self-sustained. And one day I hope it gets, part of it is built, part of it's still going on. As I said, architecture is continuing, some will change, some will move. The flexibility is phenomenal, it works. Then they came with a very big challenge about 20 years back and said, at the same time, can you build us a tower which is very different but follows traditional methods? So I followed some temples which were there in that area and the thing built it. I presented this, believe it or not, in Dubai in 1999. And after 10 years, then everyone angst to take a photograph of a building. So I remember he gave a slide, he showed me an identical building which turns and sent it to me. Then I sent him back this for yes, sir, I mean exactly what you said. But I said, I'm glad he built it, I'm still designing it. This is a school in Hyderabad. They integrate the junior, middle, and higher classroom, totally integrated, so that they don't feel they're separate from each other. And yet they have an identity of their own. This is also on, God bless one day. It should be seen and seen. I don't know now what 2030 is going to supply. Why 2030, I'm trying to see. <laughs> this I learned 4,000 years ago from me, building underground, building the hills, connecting the future universe the future of mankind. And I believe this COVID will make this come up faster. Will people live and transmit and move around in a different way? When I studied this, I went to Egypt, studied it, went to many other mountain places in Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, and North, and many other places. Maybe your area also has fast communication between mountains. Everything, one mountain is for learning, one mountain is for living, one mountain is for shopping, or totally integrated or different way of integration getting light, getting it. Today we have fiberglass technology, so there's no problem of getting light and they're getting visuals. It can happen. The city becomes just a place to work or entertain. The rest of it, people live outside with a lot of space to enjoy, not sitting in hardcore urban spaces to live. This is my, no two buildings should be identical. No two antels are identical. No two snake pits are identical. No two behinds are identical. There, similarly, we have the dance, the dance of the future is what I'm looking at. This is where the building should happen. I hope it happens. I call it the megapolis. This is the last slide. Reason should rule, but emotions will hold. And I deliberately didn't use the word emotions here, but namaskars to all of you for patiently <laughs> waiting with me for such a long time, almost an hour. Thank you very much. I'm open to anything that you are. I hope I made some sense present in this. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, all of you who managed it. Namaskars. Thank you so much, sir. It was an awe-inspiring presentation. 600 slides and not a single moment I was looking away from anything at all. Such beautiful stories. 
I love the coconut tree <laughs> standing, the elephants and the barrier for them to rub, the, the dance studio where you said the dancer could see everything but had her privacy, the puja room, all the yoga spaces, the spiritual spaces. I mean, the way you use the material itself, they look so organic, spiritual, um, the living mountains. You, it felt like we were traveling to some other dimension. And I think everybody felt that way, like the, the, the materials and the play of the, the fluidity of everything that we saw, everything that was there. I think I, I, I personally felt I was traveling to some other world, like it was completely a different dimension. <laughs> I don't know about the audiences. Uh, uh, please share your questions with us in the question answer box. Uh, there's so much, um, I, I'm sure there's so much questions uh, that you have. Uh, the, this, this, uh, this organic quality, the earthy quality, the earthy tone that you could see throughout the space. It was so beautiful, it felt so much closer to nature. Maybe because of the lockdown, we've not been able to go out so much. And looking at all these open spaces, airy spaces, just answer, I think, I, like you know there's this little child inside of you playing with those levels you know staircases all the time <laughs> going up and down moving us in those spirals and the staircases so interesting and so playful just loved everything such rich architecture unique um everything is so unique and so rich it was it was our privilege uh to have witnessed your work sir uh, and I think like, I just feel so refreshed after looking. It feels like doing something creative after this presentation. Um, so let's see if we have any questions coming up. You're all with dumb phones. They wouldn't know what to ask. Ask what you want. If I think together, everybody is awesome. Ask them anything. Ask them not to be worried what I would answer. <laughs> anything they want. It can be a question. It can be clearance, anything. I know usually even my office, they all keep quiet and keep looking at my face. <laughs> uh, excuse me, yeah, yeah, I think we're just all inspired for now. I think we have uh, Srinivas sir. He wants to ask some questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, in the meantime, until we have more questions come in, I have one question for you, sir. So, uh, like I saw, uh, you were telling uh, that uh, you know, uh, like you were designing. Um, decisions would come, dialogues would come up, and you would also look at the uh, structure and you know work with it, and your designs would continually change. But you also talked about uh, architects uh, that architects at some point should make decisions at some point. So there's always this duality when we are working on something, you know, like we are all into it, and sometimes we can't come out of the box. Like it's so like sometimes it's very difficult to actually decide. The right good. moment. So you how, how, do you, a, how do you work you, you, this? You brought a very good point, which I didn't deliberately bring it here. This is some fun I have nowadays with my young architects with your thing. Everybody says, I want to think out of the box. I look at them and say, I am an architect. I want to jump into the box and see what is it you people want to escape from? I have not gone inside and seen it. So I want to jump one day into that box and see what is there that you people don't want inside? Them? I'm sure there is so much to explore in that box. I want to go inside and see what it is. That's one challenge I have in my lifetime. I, good thing you've got this box question. Everywhere this goes out of the box. I said, what out of this? There's no box, there's no sphere. In fact, they haven't shown the house, which I made for something. I don't know, probably the client has said not to give. The two projects they have not shown, which is still under thing. One is a bubble. It's a bubble. So the bubble moves. So the client moves with the bubble wherever it is. It rolls. It's so designed. The building is so light, it can even float. But the person who walks inside is the only weight. So that weight is what keeps the place at that place. He says, where will it go? I said, wherever you want to go, you have big land, the bubble moves around. You're almost finishing the project. Hope one day. People don't believe me when I say you live in a bubble. They think, oh, it'll explode. No, I said, no. Today's tensile materials are so good. The thinner the material, the stronger it is. I tell you, any young architect, don't worry about the size of the column. There is material. That is where technology helps you. It can look at materials in a different way. It can make unbelievable stuff. 
That is where, this is where we have 19, 20 disciplines. Structure is only one, material is only one. The psychology is one. And there's so much of a house text, of light, air, sensitivity. So many, I put them as 19. Sometimes you burn, when you push the 19, this five senses and the five million, there are million choices. And we architects have to understand all of them. It is no use building a building and then structural engineer puts a beam and then say, where do I put my air conditioning duct? Which means the architect is not thought about air conditioning. He is not thought about lighting. He's not thought about that. It is our job. It is the most difficult profession in the world. Very few people understand it. Doctors, they know exactly where to cut, where to chop. And if you die, they bury, put you in the, push you off. The lawyers go argue, argue, and go, I have them all around me, aren't you? But we architects, there's one point which you made, it is not a dichotomy. When you make the point and discuss, you see, remember, you're not designing it for yourself. You, you are the process of the client. You are the language. But his is the story. Hers is the story. The children are the story. Their story you must tell. And the story like Mahabharata or any other thing, now no beginning, no end. If the story has a beginning and an end, it is not a story. The story continues, architecture continues. What we designed as an auditorium suddenly has become a pavilion somewhere. What we designed as a home has become something else somewhere. That adventure should happen. That to me is architecture. It's beyond space, it's beyond time. It has no function and no form. Function and form are for first three year students who we teach basics. Otherwise, architecture is beyond. In fact, even I was talking to those, should we even use the word architecture? Should we use the word habitat? The only thing we know is architecture is for human beings. No, I said architecture limited, pretend, is for all the other animals. Our architecture is unimaginable. Human architecture is beyond imagination. That's up to you. Why do you put some points there? Uh, that's quite something to think about, sir. <laughs> okay, uh, we have a question from uh, our very senior architect, Srinivas, sir. Uh, I think he wants to talk to you uh, and ask you in person. Srinivas, sir, I think you yeah. your Can't hear. Hello, hello, sir. Oh, Namaskar. Sir, how are you, sir? We find where you sitting nowadays. I think it's the same thing. Tell me. A site under construction. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Sir. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Sir, at uh, present, uh, we are in uh, such a condition where everything is more of materialistic in nature. Yes, sir. What do you tell us for like us to look at, you know, to keep us practice as much more I'll tell you, you got a very interesting point there. That's why I showed materials that talk. And this COVID experience to me, we are the only profession who love this COVID in India. I love it. Do you know why? Clients can't come to me. I can't need not go to site. I can sit quietly and think and dream what I want and tell the client, this is what I want you to do. What Some people like to kidnap me and all this works very well. We are the only imaginative people who really don't work with our hands, yet we get other hands to work with. That hand is also a material. That is also a thing. You should start. I agree with you on many things. Some of the points in some of the new buildings that are coming, the material dominates. That is where you should start dialoguing with the materials. I took you in a very small example. The other day I saw a small sheet, vertical, phenomenal size. Then I called the structural engineer and he said, what are you using? So this is what fantastic qualities. I said, what happens if I twist it? Then nobody has asked me this before. I said, twist it, what happens? Suddenly he realized twisting it made it 10 times stronger, the number of twists depending on, plus it looked, I haven't shown that yet. Haven't, it also looks beautiful. And then it supports anything it wants, a thing that couldn't support, but had the quality to support. So you tell the material, I will tell you what you should do. The material talks with you then and dialogues with you and says, this is what I'm capable of doing, but nobody has asked me to do it. It's like going to the site. You will find sometimes the lady who works there cleaning the floor has more artistic sense 
Then that mason or the engineer sitting there who is only looking at his books and ticking. That lady, you call her separately and say, what would you do? She said, sir, if I were there, the water should go on this side, clean this side, or I'll put some artwork on this because at home, she's the one who sits and does it for her children. I have believed it's a phenomenal dialogue. Only architecture is at that time one-to-one, -one, finding and working. That is your material, not anything. Today we have one new element that has come, the fiber concrete, I haven't shown this building, which was actually invented and done in 1964 or 66, which I attended an IIT address. It stopped today, it has come back as if it is some new revolutionary material. They brought it to me, I just smiled at it. I said, why are you smiling? I say, I saw it 60 years back, not even 50 years back. I said, you pour concrete any dimension, any shape you want. You don't need this hardcore reinforcement running parallel parallel. You have a totally new material. One thing you must make the material speak. I haven't shown, they have deliberately not shown you the project that won us the highest award two years back for the RIBA award was the Tirupati Auditorium. I think the girls have deliberately kept up some project, which I was shocked after 50 years of doing that project. We, through the other architect with whom I work, gave me the award, gave us the award, the, it's the highest award. I said, why, sir, we visited this after 50 years and realized it's still not only standing, it's working, it's beautiful. It is the Venkateshra University Auditorium. It was a candlers type of double shell, double open air auditorium and a closed auditorium. That's why we architects must go with the dreams and do it and realize the dreams into reality. Yes, there will be critical evaluation. They'll kill as many engineers, especially haters for all this, making their life difficult. Actually, we make it easier for them to understand. Go ahead, Sinyas, boldly tell me what's your actual problem at site and kick him. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so we have a few more questions coming up. I'll catch you up, sir, at some time. Please, welcome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have uh, Jacob Matthew who says, Mr. Jay Sim designed my dream home in Bengaluru, mm -hmm. construction in progress. <laughs> if you want human element to your project, it's Mr. Jay Sim's vision for a, a home will be a, a differentiator. Mr. Jay Sim changed my vision from house to home. Uh, we have a question from Ayushma, one of our participants. She, shall, she says, thank you for the inspiring talk, sir. It was very refreshing. We've been told that our design should be futuristic and we should also think about how the design should be feasible in the future. But you've mentioned in the presentation how we should think for the moment. Could you please elaborate on this particular principle of yours? Is it a girl or boy? It's a girl, Ayushma. Uh, I thought as much. She worked it very well. When I use the word futuristic, it's in a different sense. I learned it from Jay Krishnamurti. I don't know how many of you listened to him. First time I was a very young boy till he called me much, much later to design the Valley School and the Rishi Valley School. He would look at me and something I would say, he would sit under a tree talking. When I say, sir, you, that is the past. Now is the moment, that moment is gone. Now is the future. He said, time is a continuum. It is never the same. There, now, tomorrow. Tomorrow is today. Today is yesterday. It's a continuum. Human beings should learn to live in that continuum. Your building, your space should allow for that continuum. You can't build something from history and say, my grandfather lived in it, so he was comfortable. So you will be comfortable. No, you will not be. Your future, like your children, they want something. They don't know what it is. You are the present for them. You are building what your space. That's why I'm saying the flex should be flexible enough to change to the future. Evolve, architecture should evolve itself to the evolution. You will find the challenge becomes very interesting. I had recently a client, after 20 years, he came back suddenly in his car like Jack Matthews, another fasinating person who always questions me. Another 20 years, he said, Jason, you remember building my house? He said, yes. When you built my house, I had four children staying here, one married and now you come. He didn't tell me, go there. He said, what do I do with this space? All the bedrooms are empty. My kitchen is there, who will walk? Said, what would you do? As an architect, what would you advise? Shall I knock it down and give it to a builder to build something? Then his wife walked in, we had a talk. She wanted some space, only in the kitchen. I said, that was the kitchen 20 years back. Shift the kitchen near your bedroom. You have other things. She, 
she gave me the idea, sure. She said, can I have a guest house here? Because a lot of students staying around this place. It became something else. Guest house for children, for small couples. She said, she looked at him, now I am earning money, not you. He just kept a search, change it whenever you want to, what you want with that project. And it's still there. And they love going it. Take my own office. I don't stay there. Everybody else has walked in about five clients, including Shruti and all about, I think one, two, three, four clients have taken four places, all high tea and various categories. So we love this place, very flexible, very unique. And so this is supposed to be designed for an architect's office at home. This works very well, especially during this COVID period. These small spaces work because it has got tremendous sense of flexibility. Don't worry about the future. We'll look after because you design for now and in a continuum manner. New materials will come, new challenges will come. Oh, it is one more thing, something else. Boy, boy. That's why I showed you the Egypt 4,000 years ago. That has become today. It'll go on. Okay, so we have another question. It's from somebody anonymous. In some of your designs, there are, uh, there are covered vertical circulations like stair. So how will that act during rain and other climatic effect as well as safety factors? I don't, I don't understand. Can you tell me? Uh, uh, Somebody is talking about uncovered uh, uh, roofing surfaces or something above the spaces, stairs. So oh, there are no, the uncovered spaces are at the edges in certain time. He's not wrong. Oh, you're talking about that house with not no roof on. Perfect. Yes, you good fellow. He remembers. In the big center which I did that house, which I said even the walkway doesn't have a covering roof. We sat there one day. As we were finishing the house, the big roof coming up, and this, what is the cost? What is it doing? Then I said, call the, the mother and the other thing. I said, show me the weather calendar. How many days does it rain? Mm, she said, 30 days, 40 days maximum. And out of this, how many days are holidays, Sundays and Mondays, and Saturdays you go? She was very blunt. She said, about 20 days of that, we are never here, of those rainy days and things. But she said, I have, no, 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 what you're thinking, but there'll be mosquitoes and crows. I said, that I'll take care of. But tell me what is the security. We will put a grill that cannot be seen in a very light manner. There's nothing there. All the rooms can be locked. So 30 days. And I like the little one who heard this game. I won't have my dinner in the rain. <laughs> Some of them want. They put an umbrella there when they really want. Big umbrella. To take everything, sit down. Barriers can be enjoyed sitting, raining all around, taking all the food, sitting in the center space. I said, they become more creative designers than I could it. I did it for one thing, something else happens. It is up to you to explore those things. Architecture is an exploration. It's not an experiment, it's an exploration. So it depends on the uh, climatic condition and because of the- You must study everything. So taking risk is also fun sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so let's move on to another can openness design create piece of plans. Can't hear. Uh, somebody's asking about how to create open design, openness in design in small dense cities. Oh, that little little place which is not even nine feet by twenty feet, which I showed you for the aerospace man. The roof comes from one edge, doesn't even touch the other edge. The walls only float. The door is not even, I don't know whether they showed the door. The door is two feet below, four feet wide because your hand and shoulder is wide, your leg is only two feet wide. You walk to the two feet, the door opens in a big triangle like this and then closes on top. And then boom, it's not even uh, seven and a half, eight, eight by 10, but eight, about 90 square feet from which he runs one of the biggest aerospace consulting firms, three people sit there and work. And all the visitors come from abroad, they love the little garden, love the place. Her, oh, this is fascinating. It becomes not how air conditioning also. Yeah, the I smaller think... the space, the bigger the challenge. I'll tell her one more thing. It is very easy to do large projects. The moment a project is thousand acres, hundred acres, I just smile. When a project comes 20, 20 site or 20, 30 site, 20 feet, 30 feet, and they say, I want that is a challenge. Getting air, getting your neighbors quiet, getting all this working and doing the work. We are doing through projects at the moment. 
very, very dense, getting the material in the morning before the other fellow wakes up, working in the night without disturb. Working is a process, building is a process, living in a process. We made a chat in Shawnee that wanted a sunshade to be done. We found the only way we could get the setback and the sunshade done in the 20 feet site. It used to make the sunshade slope, so that becomes the staircase. When the corporation came, I said, that's my sunshade, sir, but also said, how can I stop a person from walking on a sunshade? Well, the person is walking on my sunshade. It also creates my setback. He just smiled and he said, sir, you've sort out all sorts. And inside I get the 15 feet by 15 feet space within which all of the living room, dining room, and the sitting room in the bedroom, bedroom below. The sitting room is on top. One over the other. You this? It's a real challenge. Small of the site, the challenge is great. Yeah, definitely. And I think there are many examples coming up, especially if you look into the trend of small houses, tiny houses. Roma, I also thought like this. Today, get phone calls saying, sir, we are not interested. We want luxury homes. Something is going wrong. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, there's another question for Himan Shukumar, who asks, who is asking for suggestions for a fresher, fresh architect. Fresh architect. She has passed or he has passed out? He's just, I think he, he's just passed out. He's a fresh architect. Okay. When she is just, he is just passed out. Please do not join your masters or anything immediately. Go out. At least two to three years. Go not necessarily in architects of your choice or to the field. I went to a crusher. I went to all sorts of material companies, selling companies, all sorts of places. It is worth exploring the things that make architecture possible. Go and work in an art. How many art architects have become fabulous actors? and started artistic studios. How many have started fashion design centers? Unbelievable. Go out, explore the world every time. And you then come back after two, three years. Do you still want to do masters? The only reason the masters come in handy is if you want to go and join an education institute, they, they immediately, do you have you done a PhD? Have you done a master's? When you say no, they say no. <laughs> that, I don't understand it. But it is true. It is there. How else to take away people? So have what's their qualification? Do your subject only after exploring it. And even when you join, don't join blindly to any office. You join the office. Don't join an office which has more than five architects, if you want me to advise. Any architect office which has more than 10 architects is just one army of uh, and draftsmen. They are there to kept to please the client. Yeah, <laughs> that is something to really think about. I think you've I'm got going to get kickings from the other senior architects tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, uh, so we have Hina Shrestha. She's asked. Uh, she's um, saying, "Thank you, sir, for such uh, an inspiring presentation. Uh, the way you have comprehended nature into your architecture is just wonderful, and I loved how the playfulness of textures and patterns is seen in every corners." I would like to ask, after five decades of work in the field, what is the one thing that still challenges you in your projects and how do you tackle them? Very, Very simple answer. Whatever I might design, the moment I look at the sunrise and the sunset and the moonrise and the moonset and the stars, remember it's the same sun, it's the same moon, it's the same star, yet every day they are different. That is the difference and the difference without being different. That is what architecture should happen. The difference without being different. That when you get that going, you have mastered some, if architecture is one language, English is one language in architecture. There are 26 alphabets. I think with all my experience, I might have touched the leg of A after that, which is B. There are another 26 alphabets to run in this particular, another umpteen languages for us to master. So concentrate without concentrating. It is not a contradiction. Architects alone understand concentration without concentration is what architects understand. It's comprehension without comprehension because we are the only people who think in the abstract in the detail, the detail in the abstract. No other profession does it. The poor painter requires his tools. The artist requires his tools. The engineer requires his calculations. What do we require? Nothing. Nothing. We just require the imagination. 
That's all architecture is. That's all it is. Yep. <laughs> that was very profound. Um, okay, so we have a question from Sona. I don't know whether this is our Sona or Sona. <laughs> oh. uh, so uh, uh, they're writing, I am so fascinated by a design approach. You briefly talked about underground structures in the hills inspired by Egyptian pyramids. Could you please elaborate your ideas about that? Okay, very simple. After many, many years of practice, walking around, it's one thought that came to me very hard on my head when I was giving a talk. And in fact, I've been invited to another big hill to go and tell how to explore. I find most, especially this is the Mumbai architects and Delhi architects of God. The moment you see a beautiful hill, I had a huge project, which it is beautiful hills. I worked one year working with the contours. After that, something happens, so a delay of two years happened. I go back, some foreign architect or bomb architect has come, brought bulldozers and leveled it and built tall structures. I said, here was a billion, million year old hill. You cut it off in one day. What sort of an architect are you? I said, I'm not doing any project here in Vakta. This is when it stuck me further. Suppose we don't build anything on the surface of the earth. It's beautiful. Suppose we build everything under the surface of the earth and then use these materials we dig out like the anthills and do other anthills. Look at the ants that work. How fast they climb and how fast they come. It's an unbelievable, it teaches you, dig up the behind. Can we build this below underground? I tried with water, we're trying one or two structures. It is worth it. You get an ecothermal space. If you know how to get your light, technology will help you get the light, the power, the movement, that's what I'm saying. Imagine in another 50, 100 years, 90% of civilization lives in the earth or lives in Mars or somewhere else in space. The earth will become greener. I will not talk about global climate change and all that's a huge subject by itself. Going in the sea, seas, three fourths or two thirds of the earth is sea. We haven't touched it. We haven't even learned one bit from it. It's a huge challenge to architects. Why build on the surface? Tell me. <laughs> no elevation, no perspective required. <laughs> it's very profound idea, sir. I think um, it, it takes your, uh, a very experienced mind like yours to think about all these. Uh, we have uh, another question, a new question that has come up. What do you think about uh, the saying that architecture is for rich people only? Yeah. See, when I use, when she uses the word rich, I'll turn it somewhere else. People who understand is rich. I use the word rich in a different terminology. Unfortunately, what is happening is the rich think they can afford an architect, but I find the rich are the worst clients. Do you know why? They have predetermined ideas. They will hire 10 architects, have competitions, have this, and then choose how lottery. What do they know? Do they know anything with it? And architecture is a dialogue. Yes, it is difficult for the postman or the driver to ask for, and he's scared, like my driver or my postman sometimes come. He folds his hand, stands in front of me, sir, I want to build a home. I said, come sit here, my best client. Would you believe it? When I built for the postman, the, my rickshaw wala and my auto rickshaw wala and the thing. And when I do it, in the end, she'll come, sir, I owe you my fees. I said, you took me in your taxi, you took me in your auto, you took me. No, sir, I won. She loves the house. The watchman built three floors, not even two floors, because he put poorly, he built it, sir, come and see. He's kept it neat, come. Then he gives me, with his hard-earned money, close. He doesn't tell me. He doesn't give it to me. He simply goes to my wife and said, "This is a little prasad from the gods to Sir Sir." She doesn't know what it is. It's got flowers on it, and then she opens. She says, "Jason, what is? It's got a couple of thousand rupees inside this. Can't even give it back to him." And then when I look at it and the cost of the project, he's paid me twenty percent when that stupid rich client was not willing to pay one percent, two percent. What do you say? The challenge is with us architects. We should go to them and say, we will give you the house. It is why I said, I love to go to the third and fourth village where they're scared of us.
city urban only when they come and sit on my head i will not do a client all clients only one law i have the client must walk into the door i will not walk into his door then he is with you it is difficult in the beginning it works slowly it works it's a tough job it's a very tough profession but you must go to the master um, sometimes uh, sir do you feel like um, the true architect is the community or the owner and not you you are just the means does it feel like that sometimes you you put a very you are very not a it's a very dangerous question the architect thinks he is alone right that he can stay alone would you believe we are the only profession that can't stay alone an artist can work on a painter as i said the engineer can do can we need client we need a site we need somebody to give us requirement or we need ourselves in another terminology that i become the i become the builder but yet you the architect different from the client and the art and the builder it's too different we need we are in isolation not till isolation that is when i read fountain head and became part and totally sunk into it how howard drop builds the dream space and i thought that was a joke and that was only a, a story then i went to russia i went to petersburg all the buildings she writes about are there driven by some fantastic architects believe it or not and it's not a story i'm telling you because you asked me this question i went for an architects conference in st petersburg out of that after the conference four varies i won't say the name four super architects from all over the world four of them very top walked out i could make their faces out i was little much i i went to them where are you we are going for a walk you from india i said yes one was a japanese one was australian one was us and thing on can i come is it pleasure come would you believe these four architects and me walked but nobody would have seen this building everybody is rushing up and down it happened three times on that same walk i just cutting the story short he stopped the other floor stopped i stopped i also stopped what are they looking that they had not read fountain head <laughs> all the four this is beautiful architecture it must be at least 50 years or 100 years or 150 then i went close i find the name rort there then i find the other name she uses there i said this looks familiar then i said what i took it then i came back i wrote to her office did you i got the office said yes sir you are one of the first people to really go there and visit themselves that's what she really meant when she wrote about st petersburg and many of the places in moscow and other things and then in and out in the us you can make it great architect is never seen it is experienced you must as you walk experience great architect normal architecture you can see not the other thank you so much sir um we have no more I'll questions <laughs> i think no no uh, i'm in a conference um, we really we, we are really loving the talk anju ma'am and i are saying we don't want this to end at all go ahead um, i have no problem the only plane i've <laughs> gone with snooker that old man told him and call him that so one uh, one question babaram is very seriously looking <laughs> Uh, i i i would like to request audiences to uh, bring more questions because we really don't want this to end and uh, sir here says he has time so i think we can bring in more questions uh, until the questions are coming i have one question um sometimes sir do you feel i mean with your expanse in of your career sometimes do you feel like we as uh, architects are trying to overpower over nature Do you, do you think what you do you ever that, think like uh, what if i had not built anything <laughs> you know it's a good question i did look at this again and again luckily for you along with me today is not here one of the top environmentalists of india lives very close to me the very old person they unbelievable environmentalist every time we meet we are human beings this question came up very strongly why should we build at all that's why i said we want to build underground is another way of looking at things 
if you don't build somebody, the human being built a cave, I mean, looked at a cave, then built a shelter, he needs shelter, he needs workspaces. It is, it needs a built, and then the communication community happens. They become small gatherings. That becomes the urban sector, the village, the city, the metropolis. That is human nature. You can't stop human nature. That is nature. Then I questioned and we found human being is the biggest aspect of nature. To deny that nature, the nature is wrong by the other nature, which thinks it was there before us. The only problem that happens is engineering that kills nature, not architects. What happens is, it, I won't blame them directly. They are asked to build a highway between two cities. They are given cost, this price. What they do is they take the city, they should see terrain, fact, crack, crack. They don't even walk down and see whether there was a hundred year old tree or whether there was a lake there, what was there, nothing. It is not that it can't be done, it can be done. It requires an environmentalist. It requires a little more thing. Bureaucracy and to think. This is why you sh we should start working with bureaucrats. We should start working with these people for them to understand the sensitivity of spaces. It, it brought a very interesting question the other day between two, oh, we were sitting together in one small place to say, why is anybody hurry from going from Bangalore to Mysore? Why does he want to do it in 40 minutes? When the beautiful journey is so beautiful, I thought, yes, he was a good question, but there was an extra like He said, sir, but my work is there. I have to go there and come back. Why don't, then the third person answered, why don't you use the high fast plane or fast track thing and go? Why can't the roads be still quieter and slower from place to place? I could stop here, move there and go. This will change after some time. The communication is very important for human beings. We can't be isolated. Isolation, we think will work, COVID will work, no. Human beings, that's why I said, the future of cities have to come up in a different way. It will work to be very different. Forget, you see, you're young. What is going to happen in the next 30 years? Suppose we conquer the moon or the Mars. What is going to happen? Like the people left for America, people will live for the moon, live for the Mars, we live somewhere in outer space. Something else is going to happen in a very big way in the next 40. That is why, I, unfortunately, this is a professional quorum you're talking, I was talking to students yesterday. I said, when you do thesis, please don't do a thesis which I can do. Do a thesis which I cannot do. Do a thesis under the sea or in the moon or Mars. Don't do, I'm doing a handicapped school. I said, I've designed 20 handicapped schools. I don't want to design them. I want you to design, I have to design them. Don't waste your time because I'm going to correct it. So what I know I'll correct. No, go beyond it. Question me to a point where I will find it difficult to look at the thesis drawings or the exploration of your design thesis and say, boy, this girl or this boy is making me look at different things, different spaces. That is a real hard working thesis. That's what I want young architects also to tell. It is difficult, but it should be done. Wow. So I was asking if we could stop and he said, no, we are going to continue even more. That is quite an answer, sir. Uh, we have a question um, from um, Deva, Devato Shahu. He's asking, have you ever designed any rectangular building? I have never seen Look it. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Not the, the one which I showed the little water body. Tell him, my greatest inspiration is me, Sven de Roo. The simplest rectangle, which is never a rectangle. 1 is to 1.4, 1 is to 6.7 is a rectangle, including the row 0.34 point of all come into my mind. Would you believe it or not? One historical professor taught me architecture in the 1960s. He was a history professor. Then he didn't like the way I answered so he went to his house. He said, you're talking only historical architecture. I don't want to learn. He smiled at me. Then he brought the, another thing. He said, this is the only other man I had marked. It said, Mies van der Rohe. I said, who is this? Oh, Google nothing. He said, he's today the greatest architect in the US come from Germany, he's gone there. Believe it or not, I went to the US embassy the next day, walked in. I had a lot of guts. I was a student president, so I would mock and scrape. I want to meet the ambassador. I said, I'm a student union president. I want to meet the ambassador. Those days, I said, they were very pleasant. I said, okay, come. Sir, I want to understand architecture of your buildings and things, and I want. 
what do you want, young man? <laughs> Very few people come and ask me so directly this question. What do you, who is today the leading architect in the US? He looked, called his assistant, one phone call two years back. One means, he couldn't even find means, Van der Roy, he said, I said, fine, can I have his address? Within five minutes, the PA comes with his address. Believe it or not, I went from, in those days it used to cost rupees, only envelopes. I wrote, dear Professor Mies Van der Rohe, I saw some of your links I want, I'm very honored to do it. Four lines, I'm a young student from third world country, putting it there. Those days post takes two weeks. My mother called me, Jason, you're in college? I said, yes, still school, coming back. There is a letter from the US, you have to come and sign. Go there, a lovely little parcel there. Open the book, me is Rohan. And then I looked and looked and looked at the beautiful, simple lines, minimalism at the highest level. And then, I was looking, I said, my mother said, what are you looking? I said, where is his autograph? No, is it his secretary or something? Believe it or not, same night, I borrowed a little money from her, wrote back a letter to him saying, dear, I'm honored to get your book, but I missed your art. Believe it or not, 10 days later, simple envelope, such as the greatness of great architects. Why should you look at a third world stupid architect stepping? One piece of paper, me, Svendel Rohan, his autograph. Thanks. That is greatness at that level. Would any of our architects do it? They'll tear the letter apart. That is the greatness of that man. And do you still have the letter? Pardon? Hello? Do you still have the signature, the letter? Yes, it's somewhere they're stored very safely because everybody tries to steal <laughs> that book. <laughs> it's there wow. on the book. It's unbelievable summer. Coinsberger was another person like this. Buckminster Fuller was another. He would teach me whole things sitting in an airport. I didn't even know who the hell he was till I later realized, why is he talking about tetrahedra, tetrahedra? Then I showed the photograph to one of my professors. Idiot, you were talking to this gentleman for two years. Sir, not only talking, I was writing. He is the greatest Buckminster. That is why it then gave me the courage to do, to do this tetrahedra projects. Unbelievable, which won me the Pavilion Award in 1970s and all these things. Unbelievable. It is, tell them boldly to do it. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have a further question from Devatosh himself. He's asking if you've repented any designs. Uh, sometimes, not that way of saying, I wasn't, I'm not particularly repentant. Sometimes they get angry. I don't know why. And, but then somebody said, architect should get angry. Where I expect clients to come and say, you have done this, whom you expect the very learned people sometimes, they should, they don't. That is the sorry state of affairs sometimes. They don't even ask you. Some of them don't understand architecture. But then it's not for us to question it. And then the worst point when you get annoyed is, when you go past it, they change it. Many of them don't understand. It's like gardener understanding landscape. You know, flower show person understanding how a movement of your mountainside works or something. That's when you get angry and annoyed. That is the few points when you abandon and go, you can't do it. It is there, can't help. But that's part of the larger human life. Okay. Um, so we have another question. Once again, uh, career advice for fresh graduates, but I think you've already answered that. It was, uh, it's from a lady, Anita Upreti. Um, I think sir said not to do masters right away, explore, and not to um, work for somebody who has hired more than 10 architects. <laughs> because you won't be hired as an architect, you'll be hired as a draftsman, they're cleaning up drawings. Mm -hmm. So any other, any other advice, sir? Because I think there are many fresh graduates wanting advice. Precisely. You see, it's very easy why people go if they want to do mass, many people join big firms so that when they put the big firm as part of their thing, the university there, oh, he's worked for so and so, so and so, they take you in. But the big firm, if you're working, you should look back at them and say, do they give the young architects the opportunity to learn? That is very, very important. Very, very important. That's my tablet battery, I put it on. <laughs> it's very important for them to learn. 
for them to know where they are going. But there are many people who don't want to become creative architects, who want to be generally in the run of the things. I know a couple of them here who are paid very well and looked after just to look after the drawings, execute the drawings in the site. Are you are an architect, yes, sir. I said, don't you see the door is in the wrong position? That's not my job. That is senior architect's job. He says, put the door there. My job is to make sure the door comes there. What do you do? That you should avoid. He should work in an office or a practice which allows him or her to question the senior architect. Then it's fine. Questioning is very important in architecture. It is architecture. Environment. At your end of course. And we've almost here with this interaction for almost two hours now. Really? Uh, so uh, I think it's time that we end, although we really don't want to. Up to you. My <laughs> snooker player partner is gone on his own. He's gone off. He says, I'm but, going to play. Um, I, says, gone up. I have nothing. Um, I sit quietly here looking around and then I take a walk around and come back. I very really love this. Thanks, yeah, so one last question, and I think uh, we will end this. Uh, somebody is asking uh, a little bit of your um, idea and your, your light on the idea of organic architecture. See, it's very easy to use the word organic. I've never understood anything else. A rectangular building is also organic. Has any one of him taken a leaf and studied the leaf? See the calculations on the leaf. See the amount of geometry in the leaf. See the, see the amount of straight lines in the leaf. When we were discussing, somebody very senior said, what is a straight line? I said, well, explain to me what is a straight line. If it is not a straight line, is it organic? One young kid brought me a piece of uh, little, you call one little bead, which was stuck on both ends. No, it grew on both ends. It doesn't look like it is. Nature will teach you that anything is possible. It's a question of where are you looking at? If you're looking at a flower that smells and the flower that doesn't smell, does it mean one is not organic, the other is organic? And then when we looked at these dots, when you put two dots together, is it a straight line? No. When you put three dots together, where is the third dot? Where is the three dimensional aspect of it? When you have one dot and another dot and draw a straight line, is it a straight line? It is not. Does it not go the other dimension and come back? The exploration is very important. That is the level of thinking an architect does, not A to B, just like it. you start before A, you end after B or X to Z. It continues as a process. Okay. The entire is a process. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. No um, so uh, because of our timing, timing, we'll have to end it here. Uh, so in the end, I'd like no to problem. ask for your advice to all of us, your last few words. Um, yes, you want to say, oh, geez, my wife just walked in. <laughs> no, doesn't matter. Perfect. No. Go ahead. What do you want? Advice to the younger ones or the ask older ones? All of us. No, there's no the architects can't advise. Architects can only dialogue. You get me? Like I sit in this cottage. She always questions me in many points. There's, in this space of nearly 1,800 square foot, I have only one bedroom that's not covered. That is the private space, the living space. I didn't anticipate, but we would use it for, to bring an elderly person because my steps are there when I walk up and walk down. When I walk up and walk down, I need steps. It becomes a challenge to the older person. How do you design these spaces? You have to, as you said, it should be an evolving system. Your architecture must be flexible, must evolve. And as I said earlier, don't imitate. Learn, if I see the wall behind me, you see the wall behind me? Can you see yes, my, the, yes. yeah, you can? Would you believe that those two vertical blocks are joined by what? I wish I had a thing to take and show you. The wall behind me, the vertical joints, what are they? No idea. <laughs> if I take it, it's glass. 
when a young architect walks and share them, the two blocks are joined by glass, not by mortar. Wow. They look at me and I said, in the night, the light takes and comes on this side, but even now, if I can see the light of the other side shining through, with total promise on the line, it comes. But when you tell somebody, an engineer or somebody, or even in your class, you go and say, I'm going to put the glasses to join to bricks, they will fail you the next day. <laughs> the question is to take the challenge up and do it. It makes a big difference. Yes. Imagination is the highest level. Architecture allows imagination beyond art and beyond technology. That's my base to challenge them, challenge them, and work with your workers. They are the people who finally, you don't build, somebody builds. We have to do that. It makes sense. Thank you so much, sir. There was so much learning from you today. Uh, it was wonderful to uh, witness all your projects and look at the which was very intriguing itself. Also, you were telling us about the birds. I heard you uh, absolutely back. So, sir, once again, and in the end, I'd like uh, our president, Anju Ma'am, to give the thank, uh, thank you remarks. And here I sign off. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, we, it was a privilege having you, sir. Thank you so much. Namaste, everyone. Namaskar. Okay. Thank you, sir. This could go on and on for hours, and we would just listen in. It's been so inspiring. Absolutely. Thank you. Namaskar. Yeah. If there was a vacancy in your office, I would come as an intern, come. sir. There's always there, I haven't always learned. There. I haven't learned even a dot of architecture after listening to you. This was so inspiring. So I can see the JK Awards behind you. Oh, I recognize you that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, good for you. I deliberately kept it to say who will notice. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, all those must be awards. So, so uh, like you said, this you the, some of your. This is a beautiful sculpture. It's a beautiful, very, very wow. beautiful. Yes, sir. Because you asked, I showed you. Not you. Yeah, very it's beautiful. beautiful yeah, craft is always beautiful. So, and like you said, uh, some of your projects were not in the slides today. So hopefully we get to see you again to share those projects with us. It's been very inspiring, so uh, I'm sure our fraternity is very happy to be listening in today. And uh, we look forward to more such interactions. So it's been inspiring to uh, professionals, to students, to very fresh architects. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. It has been no. my pleasure to be with you all. You gave an opportunity to express myself. It was a fantastic. Thank you very much for the evening. I'll Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Thanks a lot.